Welcome everyone to the Hemophilia Council of California's Advocacy and Policy Webinar, Telling Without Yelling. This is part two of our workshop on the art of telling your story. Now, this next scenario is if you're meeting with a legislator, someone able to affect policy. As you all are in the audience listening on the Zoom call, be thinking about how you would respond in a variety of scenarios because you are going to have an opportunity to take in a little bit of role play. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mosley Williams. I'm a 43 year old hemophiliac. I have severe hemophilia A. Does people know what hemophilia is? No. I'm glad you asked. Well, hemophilia is a blood disorder, a genetic blood disorder. Um, and what it looks like is that blood does not clot properly with people who have hemophilia. Um, earlier, we took, there was an example mentioned about elbows. So let's say that a person with hemophilia may have banged their elbow against a, a hard rail, like something like this. Um, it could swell up and continue to swell and it would not stop bleeding on its own. It would continue to swell up. A person who did not have hemophilia, if it, they banged it on the same bar, it would heal on its own over time. And so for people that have hemophilia, we need to take a clotting factor, which is a, a, a product that tells the body to stop bleeding. It replaces the factor that's missing in our blood that causes us to bleed. Now, unfortunately for me, when I was growing up, I was born diagnosed at birth with hemophilia and had a head bleed, something that, a hematoma on my head that would not stop bleeding. Um, and so they found out I had hemophilia. So they would treat us with blood products Unfortunately, those blood products at the time were not heat treated, and so there were diseases in the blood. Many hemophiliacs contracted hepatitis C and HIV and passed away as a result of that. After time, the advances of medicine, that products were heat treated, so then um, those diseases were no longer in the blood. But however, we were treated on demand, which means you're treated every time there's an injury. So when I got hurt, I would get treated, but it didn't prevent the little small things in between. And so it was more reactive than preventing. So as a result, I ended up having more bleeds and more swelling, ended up having a hip replacement. At this day, my knee doesn't bend, my arm doesn't straighten. And so these things are injuries I live with every day that prevent me from being physically active. But currently with more advances of medicine, we now have prophylactic treatment, which is every other day. And so because of that, it prevents small bleeds and, and little day-to-day -day things like banging your elbow that might happen. As a result of that, since we've had prophylactic treatment, I no longer have any injuries after what I had prior to that treatment. The issue is that treatment is very expensive. For me and my medication, to have it every other day, it costs over $800,000 a year. And so this is why I'm here today, is to advocate for continued uh, coverage through state and federal guidelines that could help us to continue to try to have a better quality of life so that we can um, live day to day and help others. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is amazing all that you've got. That you share to make sure I advocate for access to care. Thank you. Yay, let's give Mosey a hand. Yay. Okay. So thank you so much um, for joining us today. And um, please, um, you know, check out the website for the other um, the other webinars from the past, if that's helpful information to you. And we hope that you all have a great afternoon. So thank you so much. And thank you again, Janelle. And bye-bye. We'll see you all, we'll see you all soon.